Hi, I'm Vince Penman. Have you ever wondered how high a basketball should bounce? Or how a tennis ball should bounce on different surfaces like clay or a hard court? I'm Allison Topwine and welcome to the Product Design Show. The secret to the bounce is in the floor. Basketball court manufacturers measure their surface against the industry benchmark, which is concrete. A basketball court has to return at least 90% of the bounce that it would have on concrete in order to be played in competition. Tennis courts aren't like basketball courts because they may be designed to play like clay, hard court, or grass. That means getting the levels of softness and grip just right. Now imagine that you had to design a sports surface that would be just right for basketball and tennis, not to mention soccer, road hockey, and a host of other sports. That's one of the design challenges facing Sport Court, the makers of the Power Game Surface System. They've designed a modular polymer surface that is used in courts around the world and across virtually every game. We spoke with Gary Day, design engineer, and Dana Hedquist, materials engineer, to learn how they do it. Dana told us that they had to use a high-speed optic camera to record imagery that demonstrates the trajectory, entry, and exit angles on a tennis ball. For example, by adjusting the polymer compounds, the design of the legs, and the surface properties, they are able to create a surface that provides true basketball and tennis ball bounces. The next big challenge was to design a surface that would be as safe as possible. That means shock absorption. So players have a lower risk of injury from a fall or just from running hard. But wouldn't shock absorption interfere with bounce? I mean, a softer court just won't play like a hard court. That would be true if it weren't for the clever design of the varying leg length of the underside of the court. You can't see it very well, but half of these legs are 31 thousandths of an inch shorter than the other half. That means the court will deflect for a heavy weight, like a person, but won't deflect for a light weight, like a ball. That's clever. Here's another design challenge. The surface should be smooth enough that you don't get a road rash when you fall on it. That's a big turnoff for asphalt. On the other hand, if the surface is too smooth, footwear won't grip and you'll slip more often. The solution to that conflict is in the diamond design of the surface. These ribs are rounded so that they won't catch skin, but also have holes so that they can provide traction. The sport court engineers had to experiment with the surface design, including the size of the holes, the angles of the sides, and the diamond pattern to get the ideal playing surface. Finally, they also have to allow for extreme variations in temperature. As polymers heat up, they expand a lot more than other materials. To allow for expansion, they designed this loop and lock mechanism that allows for expansion. To make things more challenging, dark surfaces heat up faster than lighter colors. That's why designers at Sport Court test their designs in the hot desert of Arizona, where some playing surfaces can reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit. But they don't want to make a new mold for every experiment. At $100,000 and up per mold, they are way better off designing their models in a direct modeling system like Creo, and then applying FEA simulation to test heat expansion and shock absorption. And since direct modeling handles repeating features like holes, legs, and blends so well, they can redesign many times faster than they could with any of the parametric-based systems they previously used, which would either crash or take hours for a single design modification. You can try a free-for-lifetime version of Creo's direct modeling tools yourself. Just go to ptc.com slash go slash modeling express. If you like the show, please give it a like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or give us a rating on iTunes. We'll see you next week for more great design engineering.